In the Chapter 11 lecture, we will cover three one-sample confidence intervals. The late great marketing researcher A.C. Nielsen Jr. provides a clear rationale for confidence intervals. Nielsen wrote, too many business people assign equal validity to all numbers printed on paper. They accept numbers as representing the truth and find it difficult to work with the concept of probability. They do not see a number as shorthand for a range that describes our actual knowledge of the underlying condition. Confidence intervals provide the measurement of this range. In 1937, Jersey Neyman introduced confidence intervals. Nine years before, Neyman and Egon Pearson introduced hypothesis tests to correct what they saw as errors in R.A. Fisher's significance tests. We will begin to cover hypothesis tests in Chapter 13. Confidence intervals estimate unknown population parameters using sample statistics and probability theory. This lecture has five learning objectives. One. We will define confidence intervals, point estimates, levels of confidence, lower and upper confidence limits, and the margin of error. Two, we will construct confidence intervals for the population mean when the population standard deviation is known using z-values. Three, we will construct confidence intervals for the population mean when the population standard deviation is unknown using t-values. Four, we will construct confidence intervals for the population proportion, or pi, using z-values. Five, we will apply the finite population correction factor, or FPC, when needed. Here are some typical questions that are answered using confidence intervals. One, how much debt has the average college graduate incurred? Two, what is the average starting salary of college students who majored in business administration? Three, what proportion of the American public supports stricter gun control? Four, what proportion of automobile buyers intend to purchase an electric car in the next four years? Five, what proportion of people who have employer-supplied health insurance are satisfied with their insurance plan? Let's review important confidence interval terms. A confidence interval, interval estimate or CI, is a range of values obtained from a sample that is likely to contain the parameter we seek to estimate. Confidence intervals contain the actual parameter in the long run a certain percentage of the time. We will construct two-sided or two-tailed confidence intervals. A point estimate is the best guess of an unknown population parameter. The point estimate is the sample statistic. X bar for the sample mean, P for the sample proportion upon which the confidence interval is based. Confidence intervals are split evenly around the point estimate. Half of the interval will be above the point estimate and half will be below. What is a critical value or CV? A critical value is the value of z or t used to calculate a confidence interval. t values are a bit larger than z values. Hence, confidence intervals using t values are slightly wider than those using z values. This difference between t and z diminishes as the sample size or n gets larger. The selected confidence level states the degree of certainty that the estimate of the unknown parameter is included in the confidence interval. 95% confidence levels are used most frequently. Occasionally, 99% or 90% confidence levels are used. As shown in the red area of these three normal curves, the higher the confidence level, the wider the confidence interval. As we shall see when we move on to null hypothesis significance testing, Confidence intervals are the inverse of null hypothesis significance tests. This is because confidence intervals focus on the center of the curve, while null hypothesis significance tests focus on one or both of the curve's tails. Confidence levels and significance levels, or alpha, are closely related. One minus the confidence level equals the significance level, 
and 1 minus the significance level equals the confidence level. It is important to note that Microsoft Excel uses significance levels, not confidence levels, when calculating confidence intervals. A 95% confidence level corresponds to a 5% significance level. A 99% confidence level corresponds to a 1% significance level, and a 90% confidence level corresponds to a 10% significance level. The margin of error is the distance the confidence interval extends above and below the point estimate. It is usually presented after the point estimate as the figure after a plus or minus sign. The margin of error should be shown whenever survey results are presented. Here is a National Geographic survey that asked respondents if they believed in unidentified flying objects. 36% of Americans, plus or minus 2.9%, said they believed in UFOs. What is missing from this report? 1. The dates of the survey, May 19th through 29th, 2012. 2. Details on the sample and sample size. Here are the missing details. A nationwide random sample of 1,114 Americans. 3. The confidence level, which is 95%. Confidence limits, LCL and UCL. Confidence limits are the upper and lower confidence limits of the confidence interval. The upper confidence limit is abbreviated as UCL and the lower confidence limit is abbreviated as LCL. The upper confidence limit is the point estimate plus the margin of error. The lower confidence limit is the point estimate minus the margin of error. This normal curve shows the relationship between the confidence interval, the point estimate, the margin of error, and the lower and upper confidence limit. A common explanation of confidence intervals is that a 95% confidence interval contains the estimated parameter 95% of the time when the surveys are repeated. This, however, is a misconception. Why is this a misconception? According to Jeff Cumming, Jennifer Williams, and Fiona Feidler, this would only be true if the initial estimate is exactly equal to the parameter. These statisticians argue that the average probability that the first 95% confidence interval captures the statistic from the next sample is only 83.4%. Three factors affect the margin of error and the width of the confidence interval. One, the selected confidence level. The higher the confidence level, the wider the confidence interval. Two, sample size or n. The bigger the sample, the narrower the confidence interval. Three, data variability. The more variable the data, the wider the confidence interval. As we shall see, data variability is measured using the standard error of the mean or the standard error of the proportion. Let's review confidence intervals for the population mean when the population standard deviation is known. The formula for this confidence interval is very simple. The point estimate, which is the sample mean, plus or minus the critical value of z for the selected confidence interval times the standard error of the mean. The standard error of the mean is the population standard deviation over the square root of n, which is the sample size. As previously stated, three confidence levels are commonly used, 95%, 99% and 90%. What are the critical values for these confidence levels? The critical values can be found using the area under the curve table or Microsoft Excel. Excel provides greater precision than the area under the curve table because Excel calculates the critical values to 15 decimal places. The area under the curve table only shows two decimal places. Let's construct a confidence interval. Our question, what is the average number of spam phone calls a person receives in a month? The answer to this question can be estimated by constructing a confidence interval of the population mean using sample data. Here are our sample statistics and confidence level. The sample mean, our point estimate, 
is 34 span calls per month. The population standard deviation is presumed to be 12.57 spam calls. The sample size is 64 people and the confidence level is 95%. So based on the area under the curve table and Microsoft Excel, the critical value is 1.96. We can calculate this confidence interval by hand in three steps. Step one, enter the values into the equation. Step two, calculate the standard error, the mean, which is symbolized as sigma sub x bar. 12.57 over the square root of eight equals 12.57 over eight, which equals 1.57. Step three, multiply the critical value for z, 1.96, by the standard error, the mean, 1.57, to get the margin of error of 3.08. The 95% confidence level is 34 spam calls a month, plus or minus 3.08 spam calls. As shown in this screenshot, Microsoft Excel can also calculate confidence intervals for the population mean using its confidence.norm function. The confidence.norm function has three arguments. The first is the significance level, not the confidence level. As previously stated, the significance level is the complement of the confidence level. For a 95% confidence level, the significance level is 0.05. The second argument is the population standard deviation, which in this example is 12.57. The third argument is sample size. In this example, n is 64. The margin of error is 3.08, the same as the calculation performed by hand. We can also calculate the confidence interval for the population mean using the student t distribution instead of the normal distribution. We will now discuss the student t distribution. First, we need to discuss why a new distribution is needed. The whole point of confidence intervals is to estimate the unknown population mean using sample statistics. But if we do not know the population mean, why would we know the population standard deviation? The cautious answer is that we would not know the population standard deviation and we should use the sample standard deviation instead. We should not therefore assume a normal distribution and use z-values when the population standard deviation is unknown. There are two key normal distribution assumptions that must be met to use z-values. One, the shape of the population distribution may be unknown, but the number of observations is greater than or equal to 30. So to use z-values, sample size should be 30 or more. When the sample size, or n, is greater than or equal to 30, the central limit theorem states that the sampling distribution will be normally distributed. The second assumption is the population standard deviation is known. If the population standard deviation is unknown, z-value should not be used even when n is greater than or equal to 30. t-value should be used instead. Meet William Gossett, a University of Oxford chemist. He created the student t-distribution during the first decade of the 20th century. Gossett worked as a chemist and master brewer at the Guinness Brewery in Dublin, Ireland. At Guinness, he worked with tiny samples of grains. He could not always invoke the central limit theorem and use z-values. He developed the student t-distribution for use when the normal distribution assumptions are not met. The brewery considered Gossett's innovation a trade secret, but it agreed to allow Gossett to publish this distribution if it were not associated with Gossett, Guinness, or beer. This is the reason why this distribution was named student t. Today, student t is used more often than z-values. In 1906-1907, Gossett had a leave from Guinness to study at Carl Pearson's laboratory, the Galton Eugenics Laboratory at University College London. Pearson was editor of Biometrics, a journal dedicated to providing statistical support for eugenics and Darwin's theory of evolution. Gossett tried and failed to interest Pearson in student t. Pearson, who used large samples, saw no reason to use student t. In 1912, 
Ronald A. Fisher, a very influential statistician of the first half of the 20th century, set the mathematical foundation for the student T distribution. The student T distribution is continuous and symmetrical like the normal distribution. It is platycardic, which means compared to the normal distribution, its peaks are flatter and its tails are thicker. In essence, the student T distribution has less kurtosis than the normal distribution. Kurtosis deals with the sharpness of the peak in a continuous probability distribution. The student T distribution is defined by 1, the sample mean x bar, 2, the sample standard deviation or s, 3, degrees of freedom, which for the student T distribution is found by the total sample size or n minus 1 or 2. The student T distribution is used to analyze data from one or two samples. In chapter 16, we will review how R.A. Fisher's F distribution, which is closely related to student T distributions, are used to analyze data from two or more samples. The critical value for T can be found using the student T table, shown on the right, Microsoft Excel, as well as other statistics programs, can find the critical value for student T. Deciding on whether to use Z or T, the first question is whether the population standard deviation, sigma, is known. When the population standard deviation is unknown, use T. When using T, the distribution of the data should be normal or nearly normal, which is to say symmetrical. If the data is not normally distributed or nearly normally distributed, it needs to be transformed. Transforming data is beyond the scope of an introductory statistics class. If the population standard deviation is known, use Z if the sample size is 30 or more. If the sample size is 29 or less, use T. Let's construct a confidence interval for the population mean using the student T distribution. The formula for confidence intervals for the population mean is very similar to that using Z values. There are two changes. One, the critical value for T is used instead of the critical value for Z. The critical values for T are slightly larger than those for Z. This results in wider confidence intervals. The difference in critical values diminish as the sample size increases. The second difference is sample standard deviation is substituted for population standard deviation. Back to the robocall example. Degrees of freedom equals 63, found by the sample size 64 minus 1. The critical value for T is 1.998, not 1.96. The larger critical value will result in a wider confidence interval. Finding the critical value of T using the student T table is easy. First, find the appropriate column. There are three columns. One for confidence intervals, one for one-tailed test, one for two-tailed tests. Select the column for confidence intervals that match the selected confidence level. The second step is to find the degrees of freedom row. To repeat, degrees of freedom is defined as the total number of observations minus one. In this case, degrees of freedom is N64 minus one, which is 63. The critical value is found at the intersection of the column and row. The critical value for a 95% confidence level with 63 degrees of freedom is 1.998. You can easily find the critical value for T for any combination of confidence levels and degrees of freedom using Excel's TINV function. This function has two arguments, the significance level and two, the degrees of freedom. Here are the steps to calculate the confidence interval for the population mean using student T. Step 1, find the critical value for T, which is 1.998. Step 2, add the point estimate, critical value, and sample standard deviation to the formula. Step 3, complete the calculations. The confidence interval is 34 span calls plus or minus 3.17 span calls. Excel's confidence.t function will calculate the confidence interval for the population mean using t-values. The function, as shown in cell E15 in this screenshot, has three arguments. One, the significance level. 
two, the sample standard deviation, and three, the degrees of freedom. Confidence intervals constructed using t-values are slightly wider than those using z-values, plus or minus 3.17 versus plus or minus 308 in our example. Now let's turn to confidence intervals for the population proportion. What are proportions? Proportions are represented as a fraction, decimal, ratio, or percentage of part of a population or sample that has a certain characteristic. Proportions are considered binary, success or failure, yes or no, has the characteristic or does not have it. The formula for proportions is very simple. The proportion P equals the random value X over the sample size N. Here are three proportion questions. One, what proportion of Americans think Donald Trump is a racist? Two, what proportion of American men have male pattern baldness? Three, what proportion of Americans follow the paleo diet? The formula for confidence intervals for proportions mirrors that of confidence intervals for the mean. The point estimate, which is the sample proportion, plus or minus the critical value for z times the standard error of the proportion. With confidence intervals for the proportion, t values are not used. The standard error of the proportion symbolized as SEP or sigma sub p is the square root of the sample proportion p times 1 minus the sample proportion p over the sample size n. For decades, the Gallup poll has been surveying Americans on their attitudes towards the legalization of marijuana. Here are the results from their October 2019 poll, broken down by political affiliation. In this survey, 66% of Americans favored the legalization of marijuana for recreational use. Based on political identification, 78.22% of Democrats, 67.79% of Independents, and 50.64% of Republicans favored the legalization of marijuana for recreational use. Here is how the proportion for Republicans was calculated. 393 Republicans were surveyed, this is the N, and 199 said that marijuana for recreational use should be legal, this is X. X over N equals 0 0.5064 or 50.64%. Here are the calculations for the confidence interval at a 95% level. 50.64% plus or minus 4.94%. The lower confidence limit is 45.70% and the upper confidence limit is 55.58%. How do Republicans compare to Independents and Democrats? Republicans 50.64% plus or minus 4.94%. Independents 67.79% plus or minus 4.35%. Democrats 78.22% plus or minus 4.31%. Given that the confidence intervals do not overlap, we can conclude that independents are more likely to favor the legalization of marijuana than Republicans, and Democrats are more likely to favor the legalization of marijuana than independents. Charting the confidence intervals is a way of visualizing our findings. Finally, let's review the finite population correction factor or FPC factor. The finite population correction factor is used with small samples when the samples are greater than or equal to 5% of the population. The sampling is done without replacement, which means that once an item is selected from the population, it is not returned to the population. The finite population correction factor makes the confidence interval more precise. Here is the formula for the finite population correction factor. FPC is the square root of the number of observations in the population minus the number of observations in the sample over the number of observations in the population minus 1. Here is the formula for confidence intervals for the population mean using the finite population correction factor. The point estimate, which is the sample mean, plus or minus the critical value of t 
times the standard error of the mean times the population correction factor. Let's construct a confidence interval using the finite population correction factor. Lara is secretary of her high school graduating class. She is preparing for the 20th class reunion. She wants to estimate the average number of children her classmates have. The sample mean is 1.6 children and the sample standard deviation is 1.2 children. She takes a sample of 25 graduates from a population of 150 graduates. There are 24 degrees of freedom found by the n of 25 minus 1. The critical value for t at a 95% confidence level is 2.064. The finite population correction factor is 0.916. This correction reduces the width of the confidence interval. Based on this calculation, the 95% confidence interval is 1.6 children plus or minus 0.4 five, four children. Except where otherwise noted, clear-sighted statistics is licensed under a Creative Commons license. You are free to share derivatives of this work for non-commercial purposes only. Please attribute this work to Edward Volchak. You can access clear-sighted statistics for free along with its Excel and PowerPoint files on the CUNY Commons. The URL is https forward slash forward slash cuny dot manifold app dot org forward slash projects forward slash clear dash cited dash statistics.